It is quite funny I saw this movie right after Megalopolis because this is another controversial movie that's getting a lot of hate. Let's talk about Joker. Fully adieu. The anticipated sequel to the original Joker movie from 2019 that won Joaquin Phoenix a Best Actor Oscar. Uh, let me start off by saying this. I like the movie. I saw all the reviews saying that this was an awful movie. So I went into this movie ready to be disappointed. I was like, oh well, I'm still gonna watch it, but I'm sure I'll get disappointed somewhere along the way. I was like, the musical numbers are gonna feel out of place. They in fact did not. And if you don't like musicals, I completely understand if you hated this movie. They didn't advertise this movie as a musical. The director did say that the movie was gonna be a musical. You would get those news on IGN, Screen Rant, but if you don't follow any of those, there is no way you know this is a musical. And even then, the actors during the press junkies didn't say that this was really a musical. They always diverted from that. And I'm not liking that Hollywood is doing this because a lot of people are going into these movies expecting not a musical and then they get a musical. Of course, you're gonna be disappointed. It's kind of like, imagine there's this burger place and they tell you, come in, we'll feed you one of our best meals. So you're expecting a burger but then they give you a grilled cheese sandwich. When you lie to audiences, you're gonna have a bad reputation. A lot of people are gonna hate the movie because they didn't wanna watch a musical. So people who don't wanna watch a musical, don't trick them into coming to your movie. They're just gonna talk bad about your movie. But anyways, going back to the movie, I really like the musical numbers. Nothing really stood out to me that I'm gonna start listening to now, but the musicals were executed very well in, in the way that they show Arthur Flex fantasy, that fantasy that the Joker persona created for him. I think it was another great example of great imagery, a great metaphor that was used to represent what Arthur Fleck was going through. I mean, that's how you use a musical, you know, when words are just not enough that you need music. And the way it's done is so well. The cinematography uh, in the musical portions and even just throughout the movie is perfect. Per perfect. I hope that one day I get that same type of feel that the cinematographer of this movie had because the cinematography is gorgeous and the acting, Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga deliver incredible performances and, and everyone in the supporting cast too. And that's why it throws me off when people say this is an awful movie. You cannot say that this is an awful movie when you have great acting, great cinematography, even great directing, which a lot of people are criticizing Todd Phillips for. I mean, you can dislike the movie, but you cannot say this movie's trash. Trash is Madame Web. Trash is Madame Web. There's no way Madame Web has a higher cinema score than, than the Joker fall you do. There's absolutely no way. That's disrespecting everyone involved in making Joker fall adieu. You can dislike the movie, you can hate the movie, but calling it a bad movie? Like, let's be careful with how we use our adjectives. A movie doesn't have to be perfect, otherwise it's trash. There can be an in-between. You know, there's perfect movies, there's good movies, great movies, social movies, could have been better movies, and then there's bad movies. There's, there's levels to this. So calling this movie trash, it's just disrespectful, especially when, with how perfectly executed a lot of the elements in this movie are. And going to the ending, the super, super debated ending. I did not mind the ending. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the ending of this movie is highly controversial. It's highly, highly controversial. And I don't have a problem with it. I kind of saw it coming. Not the way it exactly happened, but even from the first movie, I got a sense that this is what the director had intended the whole time. And I'll make a separate video about the Joker ending because there's so much I, I want to talk about, especially because it's such a debated topic right now. But I did not mind the ending. I think. It made sense. It makes sense in the world that Joker is placed in. It makes sense for so many reasons. It works and I liked it. There's some elements in the movie that feel dragged out and I that's where I knock it down points. 
it is not as perfectly paced as the original Joker is. I don't think any of the sequel, I think people are being too quick to hate on the movie. And this is one of those scenarios where if you were lied to about this movie, you're gonna hate it because you were not expecting a musical and you get it. I think this movie might not go well with a lot of diehard DC fans. A lot of diehard DC fans are probably gonna be disappointed. I, I am a diehard DC fan, but the way I enjoyed the first Joker movie was through the lens that I was expecting this type of ending, or at least something similar to this ending. And if you're unsure about it because it's a musical, don't let the musical part stop you. I think there's a lot to enjoy. And I think this could be a musical that you enjoy even if you don't typically watch musicals. But if you absolutely hate musicals, you're not gonna like this movie. It's just the truth. It's a musical and if you don't like musicals, you're you're gonna dislike it. But I do think the Joker Foley do is not a bad movie. I really enjoy this movie. And I think it's gonna be a cult classic. A lot of people are gonna hate it, but a lot of people are gonna love it. And I think maybe in 10 years, there's gonna be a very passionate fan base for the second movie. A lot of people are really gonna love this. This is kind of how I felt about La La Land. I went into that movie thinking that, spoiler alert, the characters were gonna get together. And then when they don't, I felt cheated. I was like, what was the whole point of watching the movie? I thought it was a romantic story about two people coming together and falling in love and staying together. And then the ending of them not ending up together made me so mad that I thought La La Land was one of the most overrated movies of all time. And then I watched it again, having this, knowing how the movie ends. And now I think it's one of the best movies made. I don't know if people are gonna have that same reaction with Joker. Obviously, La La Land is one of the best movies ever made. And Joker For All You Do is not quite that, but I think a lot of people are gonna come back to this movie and really enjoy it, knowing what to expect now. Knowing how this movie ends. Is it gonna be their favorite movie afterwards? I don't think so. It's definitely a, such a different comic book movie. It does not follow the formula. And I'm always down for movies that don't follow the formula. This movie is not a crime saga. This is a courtroom drama that has musical elements in a very grounded setting despite the city that it's set in called Gotham. It may be Gotham, but it feels like this story could happen in a real world. This is definitely a better case than Megalopolis. Megalopolis is one that you really have to open your mind, your Emersonian mind. But in this case, for Joker Folio, I think anyone can enjoy it. You just gotta know what you're getting yourself into.